Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's Top 5 Camps. I'm TNG, and as ever, I've got some sick camps to show you from some of the best builders in Fallout 76. Now then, your judge this week is Roadkill You, and let me tell you, the guy's an absolute beast when it comes to building, especially shelters. So with that being said, let's take a look at this week's Top 5 Immersive Camps, and then we'll have a look at the clean camps after that. Alright then, here goes. In the number 5 spot, we have Jawa 4 with the Immersive and Clean camp build this should be um an interesting one shouldn't it now on the outside yeah i'd say this is more clean than immersive obviously there is some scrappy stuff knocking around but yeah there is definitely a lot more clean elements to it in my opinion at least i mean you could say it's like an old pre-war modern house that's been taken over by settlers and they've just drug all that uh random stuff in from wasteland but i don't know uh what do you guys think let me know down in comments it's um it's definitely an interesting one. Nice mix of two styles. Right then, so let's have a ganders on interior at thing. And yeah, it's pretty much the same, in it? We've got some immersive decor. We've got some clean decor. But overall, uh, both aspects of it are very well done. Ah, it's an interesting camp, this Jawa. Nice to see you stepping away from your normal style. Uh, but yeah, like I say, very well decorated. Very cool design to it. Aye, fair play, pal. Thank you very much for entering this week. And congratulations on the number five spot. In the number four spot this week, we have Twisted Rose with Beckett's Island build. Aye, pretty cool location choice, Rose. I've not seen many people building here. I mean, in fact, I'm not even sure where it is, to be honest with you. Um, I'll have to have a look into that. It's a pretty cool little location, this. Anyway, I want to build itself. I like the simplicity, Rose. There's nothing too much to it at all. Uh, very scrappy, very fallouty. And overall, a very fitting camp for, um, for the wasteland. Fits in really well. Now, saying that, while your structure is actually quite, you know, simple, the decor is anything but. You've done a fantastic job with that, love. It's a properly well-decorated camp, that. No complaints from me whatsoever. And, you know, it fits in with Beckett's kind of theme, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty cool camp, that, Rose. Thank you very much for entering this week. And congratulations on number four spot. Coming in at number three, we have Silver Bonnet with the Autumn River Hideaway. You know what, yeah? I really like this camp. I've um, seen it in person, and it's really clever how she's actually put it together. I'm also a poet, and I didn't know it, so it seems. But yeah, what Bunny's done is found a nice stretch of broken road. Oh, highway, yeah. She's then taken one of the broken highway prefabs and built a camp around it, and I think it's bloody clever. It really does fit in well with, um, well, with, <laughs> with the road um, that's in the area. It's a really cool design, and not only that, the little shack slash living area there, that's the treehouse prefab. And again, it's a really clever use for it. Fits in really well with the um, with the overall theme at build. Really cleverly done, really well put together, and your decor bunny, as always, it's on point. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on number three spot. In the number two spot, we have Slog5533 with the Raider Fortress Camp. Yeah, this is this is pretty awesome, this one. I think it's one of the most convincing Raider-esque, blood eagle style camps I've actually seen in a long time. Properly well put together, and the location choice as well. Spot on, mate. So let's have a little bit of a closer look at um, Slog's you know, actual structure. I liked how you've made it middle there. Nice little bit of a uh, camp trickery. I think the pagoda walls look bloody awesome as well. They actually do make for a pretty convincing tower. Yeah, I like that. Another thing I do like, and I never thought I'd say this, is the prefabs you've got down. Guys, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of most prefabs, but they look absolutely phenomenal there. Um, yeah, they really do match in with the build. Now, onto decor. It's not bad, Slog. Um... I'm not a massive fan of it. I thought you could have put a little bit more in there. But it isn't bad, right? It's not offensively empty or full of ridiculously themed stuff. You know, I've not got like a random Nuka-Cola bottle in the corner. <laughs> you know, just because you got it from the Atomic Shop. You know what I'm saying, don't you? Properly sweet looking build this. From the outside, perfect. One of the best I've seen Raider themed wise. Interior, like I say, could have done with a little bit more in my opinion. But yeah, what does that matter? Thank you very much for entering this week, buddy. Congratulations on the number two spot. That's off to you, mate. Right then, so now we come to the number one spot of the immersive category. And who do you think's got it this week? 
Well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to keep you waiting for just a little bit longer because it's time for the honourable mention section. Yes. And as ever, guys, this week, we have two of them. The first one goes to KBuild76 with the Stone House by the Creek build. What a pretty little camp this is. Right off the bat, I love the use of the Wavy Willard's walls. I think they look excellent in any build. But you know what? Despite the fact they're actually quite clean looking, they're fitting in well with this immersive camp perfectly. Yeah, I like the exterior on this one, Kay. Now, onto your interior. And I think this is even better, to be honest with you. Your decoration is absolutely fantastic. I like the stepping stones you've got up to the split level kind of jobby you've got going on there and straight up now in my personal opinion i think this was one of the best decorated camps submitted this week so fair play to your k build thank you very much for entering congratulations on honorable mention our second and final immersive honorable mention goes to caesar tron my god that sounds like a um a geriatric buddy um what do you call it transformer doesn't it oh not today optimus <laughs> <laughs> I feel we got a little bit... Sorry, right, I'm sorry. What Caesartron has done here is made this fantastic looking Blue Ridge truck. If you've seen the top five before, guys, you'll know I'm a massive fan of uh, vehicular kind of builds. And this one is awesome. I like how you put the truck bed on the back of it and you've got the power armor stand as a little crane kind of thing. And also I like call the stuff you've merged into the truck to make it look a little bit unique. Got a mole rat generator. And of course, we can't miss the actual full-on garage that you've made behind it. Really smart build, really cool. One of my personal favourites of the week, actually. Thank you very much for entering this week, and congratulations on the honourable mention. On your first submission as well, that's um it's not too bad at all, pal. Right then, so now we come back around to the number one spot, and who do you think's got it this week? Well, I'm not going to keep you waiting for any longer. This week's winner of the immersive category is Lady H with the Ash Eat House. This is as immersive as a build can possibly be, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, just look at how Lady H has built it. The house looks half buried. And a lot of the houses in the Ash Heap actually look this way. It seems to have fared a lot worse than the rest of Appalachia. This camp just fits in with the wasteland perfectly. It looks like something Bethesda could have slapped down in the game. And believe me when I say, it's actually a tricky build to do too. Um, I've actually tried something similar to this. And it's not easy. You have got to do a lot of messing around. Some under the map work as well in uh, some cases. There's a lot more to it than meets the eye. And Lady H, I think you've done a fantastic job with it. Yeah, it looks wastelandy. It looks scrappy. And you can tell you put a lot of time into it as well. Now onto your interior. And again, your decor. Well, there's not much to see of it, is there? It's half bloody buried. Matches in with the theme of the build, I guess. What you're seeing here, though, is but a fraction of Lady H's interior. If we head on over here to this symptomatic, it will very kindly take us underground. And what we have is a full on, I don't even know, is it a research lab, Lady H? Is it an experimentation place? You let me know because this could be interpreted in a number of different ways. No matter what it is though, it's really cool. I think the build itself is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, top marks from me, Lady H. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on the number one spot. More than well deserved. And there we go, guys. That wraps up the top five immersive camps of the week. Next up, we've got the top five clean camps. Now, just before we do that, again, I'd like to make you aware your judge this week is Roadkill You. Thank you very much for taking the time to do it this week, my friend. And as ever, guys, if you lot watching want to try your hand at entering the competition, it's dead easy to do. There's a link in the description to my Discord, and you just got to submit your builds into this section here. It's dead simple, and there has been a lot of new entries getting in recently, so please, give it a shot you never know anyhow enough of future top fives let's get back to the task at hand and take a look at this week's clean camp builds in the number five spot we have daz mead with the factory camp and daz i absolutely love this one pal it's one of my favorite builds from yourself it's a really cool looking exterior it does look very industrial and it looks very modern as well it doesn't look like an old school kind of factory this looks like a place where robots or some other one them lines and get built do you get what i'm saying guys ah of course you do of course you do 
Yeah, really cool and unique exterior. It's different. It's nice to see some that breaks the mold a little bit. Now, onto your interior. And again, very industrial. It definitely matches in with the theme of what you're trying to do here. I like the conveyor belts. That is a really cool touch. And those mole rat generators, they fit in perfectly here. They are literally one of the best bits of atomic shop goodness that have ever been added to the game in my opinion atomic shop goodness i'm not sure where i'm going with that anyhow Daz, really sweet build you've got here like i say one of my favorite ones i've seen from yourself it's different it's unique and i like the theme behind it yeah top job on this pal thank you very much for entering this week congratulations on the number five spot more than well deserved Coming in at number four, we have Tail Weaver with the St. Mary's Cathedral Camp. And this is a chunky boy, ain't it? Seriously, look at the size of this thing. Now, I get it. Cathedrals are quite big structures in general. But for Fallout 76, this is, um, <laughs> this is gargantuan. Right, so I love the design of the thing. The back end of it where it's got that nice curved piece. Yeah, it looks awesome, that does. And I also like how you've got the bell tower prefabs kind of merged into the build. Obviously, they're not merged in the traditional sense, but you get what I'm saying. It's a really nice incorporation. Now, with this being such a large build, I am slightly worried about the decor levels, but it is a cathedral, so there's not really too much in them, is there? Let's have a ganders. And, yeah, it um, <laughs> looks like a church, doesn't it? Like I said, there's not really too much to them. Now, yes, in my opinion, it could do with more decor, but... We don't really have too many decor pieces for a church, do we? I mean, yes, a pipe organ would have been nice and some drapes hanging down from the walls, but it, it is what it is. It does the job. It, it's a cathedral build. It looks like one. Tail Weaver, thank you very much for entering this week and congratulations on the number four spot. More than well deserved. In the number three spot, we have a new entrant to the competition. It's Jerry Samuche with the Japanese Sky Castle Camp. And right off the bat, the first thing we've got to discuss is the location, isn't it? I'm guessing this is one of those random tiles in the air where you can put your camp module down. I'm not familiar with it, but it definitely does make for an interesting build. Um, I think the best way is to put it. So if we actually take a look at the building question, obviously it's heavily themed japanese in it i mean the clue is in the title of the blooming thing and you know what it is an half decent looking camp i'm not really a massive fan of this style to be 100 honest with you i prefer the dojo we kind of things and floating camps as well yeah they're very hit and miss for me i will say though i think you've done a wonderful job of actually building up here like i say i'm not very familiar with a gaff but yeah, it doesn't look like the nicest of spots. I'm not seeing any flaws, so I'm guessing you've had to use roof pieces and free place in the walls anywhere. I know it's quite a well-known technique now, but it's still difficult to pull off, especially to get a camp looking nice and symmetrical as well, like, um, like it's been done here. Yeah, difficult place to build in. Really nice looking exterior. Your interior is just as well done as well. Again, we've got that Japanese-y kind of vibe in it. Yeah, really cool camp this, mate. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on number three spot. Coming in at number two, we have the return of the moon. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Moonlight Cowboy is back with another rage-inducing creation. Again, moon, I'll ask you. <laughs> Why do you do it to yourself, man? For those of you who haven't worked it out by now, yeah? Most of this build is done by using roof pieces. So, the only walls in there, what I can see, is the glass ones. Now, yes, there is fireplaces acting as walls, but, yeah, most of it is roofs. Oh, tell a lie, sorry, there is actually a couple more walls inside, but... This, this is mostly roof pieces. Now, I ask you, how hard is it to actually get a decent looking camp in 76? You have to spend a bit of time on it, don't you? Aye, of course you do. And that's even when you're using conventional building methods and, you know, actually making walls 
using wall pieces. Moonlight, though, is a different breed. He will constantly do these random builds, which obviously take longer than a normal version of it would do. And the only reason I can assume he does this is because he hates himself. That That's the conclusion I've come to. He takes some sick pleasure from it. Like buggery, would you catch me like making a build out of roof pieces? Making a normal camp takes too long. So, Moon, hats off to you for your dedication and the time you've put into this thing. Now, personally, am I a fan of the outside design? Um, it's not my favourite one from yourself. It has got quite an acquired taste. But like I say, I can appreciate the amount of time you've put into actually making the thing. And it's definitely unique. Moon, thank you very much for entering this week. And congratulations on the number two spot. That's off to you, mate. All right then, guys. Now we come to the number one spot of the clean section. But as ever, before I let you know who that is, I've got to show you this week's honourable mentions. Yes, we've had the immersives, so it's only fair we have the clean ones. As per usual, we do have two of them, and the first one is going to go to Ian Reptile with the Vault Bob... <sighs> the Vault Bob Scrap Pants. This thing is... um. It's horrific. That face is like staring into the abyss. Look at the state of that eye. <laughs> and his teeth as well. That says it's a bit of a weird one, this. Um, yeah, it's cool though, right? Props to you for your ingenuity. And it does look like SpongeBob. I, I do actually like it, despite the fact it's truly horror-inducing. Is it a clean build? I'm not too sure on that one, Road. But guys... <laughs> <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Ian, thank you very much for submitting this monstrosity. Congratulations on the honourable mention. Dear me, that's going to take some beating. Right then, so our second honourable mention goes to Schlitz and Jiggles. I, I like that name. Very clever. I see what you've done there. And this is Joey Bellow's Bachelor Pad. Straight up, I like the shape of the thing. It reminds me of an old British lunatic asylum. There is a couple of them that have that shape in the actual middle of it. It's hard to explain, but I know what I'm on about. It's properly unique. It definitely stands out. And yeah, exterior-wise, solid work. Now, your interior, again, very well put together. I like the blue screen of death. That's, um, that's a nice touch. Ah, it's a pretty cool camp, this one. Thank you very much for entering this week. Congratulations on honourable mention. Oh, and I do believe this is actually your first time submitting in it. I could be wrong. Let me know down in comments. And that wraps up all the honourable mentions. Again, thank you very much, guys. I do appreciate it. Now we come back to the top five and the number one spot, and I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. This week's winner is a new entrant to the competition, and she has absolutely smashed it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the houseboat build by Ninja Gaming Girl. And I think there's only one word that can describe this camp, really. Floral. Not aural, you dirty buggers. Floral. There is a lot of flowers here. But believe it or not, I actually do like it. You don't see many camps loaded to the brim with uh, greenery and plants and whatnot. Especially not in a place like the Maya. At the White Springs, yeah, 100%. Every blooming modern camp you see there has um, some form of flower in it. But in a place like the Maya, I wouldn't have thought it'd work, but... It really does. I like the exterior of this thing. My favourite thing about this camp, though, right, is your houseboat itself. Believe it or not, it actually took me a minute, even though <laughs> I read the title, to see where the boat was. You really have incorporated it into your build very well. And it makes for a pretty cool interior. That is definitely unique, where the house actually crosses over into the boat. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool and different kind of build ninja you have smashed it with this one like i say very unusual very different kind of a uh, camp build but it's awesome thank you very much for entering this week and congratulations on the number one spot hats off to your mate and thank you to everybody who entered the competition this time round. You all did a fantastic job. Now, would I have chosen the exact same camps that Road did? No, there's a couple I probably would have swapped out, but you know, that's the joy of having judges. And I'd like to say a massive thank you yet again to Road for actually doing it this week. It's not easy. As ever, guys, massive, massive thank you to all my channel members and Patreons. The extra support is much appreciated. If that's anything that you guys watching are interested in, there's a link in the description. Anyhow, as we say it north, I'll love you and leave you, and I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun, everybody.